Welcome to Red Barn Acres. Today's video is on a black powder revolver. This is an 1860 Colt Army. Uh, it's actually a replica that I bought in 1999. This is made in Italy. It's uh, Eli Pieta uh, made this revolver. What I'm going to show you today is the disassembly, reassembly, loading, and shooting followed by cleanup of this pistol. It requires a lot of work, honestly, uh, to be able to shoot one of these. You gotta really like it or, or you don't wanna go through the trouble. Just get yourself a Glock and go bam, 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 bam. Nobody cares. I think I paid $129 at Bass Pro Shops for this revolver back in 1999 and gave it to my dad as a Christmas gift. Uh, about a decade later, I got it back from him, traded him for a uh, Smith & Wesson. Uh, stainless steel barrel pistol because he, he tended not to take too good care of the uh, his firearms so I wanted to take a little bit better care of it so I swapped him and got it back um, and uh, when I got it back I had to replace the hammer spring and eventually I had another part that I had to replace was the uh, the hand the hand is the part that advances the cylinder when you cock the pistol it basically causes the cylinder to spin into the next position. I was able to get that part at Taylor Firearms. Uh, they specialize in historic firearms. I had to do a little bit of uh, tailoring to that piece in order to get it to fit, but it works great. Uh, another part I had to work on a little bit was the hammer. Uh, because of the problem with the hand, the cylinder was not advancing properly to the next index and uh, had someone over shooting it and they kept repeat firing it in between cylinders and it caused the hammer to uh, to mess up. I had to add some more metal with the welding machine and then file it to fit and then heat treat it again. Other than that, it's been a great pistol. A little history on this, Samuel Colt came out with this pistol in 1860 and they kept making this pistol up until about 1873 and uh, as far as I know there were about 200,000 of these made and the Union Army used this in the Civil War, in the American Civil War. Um, this is the Army version. There was a Navy version. Doesn't mean they used one in the Navy and one in the Army Samuel Colt was not only a good manufacturer and a good inventor, he was a good marketer. The only difference is that the Navy version was a 36 caliber and the Army version was a 44 caliber. It had nothing to do with which branch of the service the pistol was actually used in. This is a six shot revolver. It uses black powder or pyrodex only. I shoot 44 caliber lead balls. And I use number 11 percussion caps. You can use number 10s also, but I like to use the number 11s. Now, to load this thing, have what's called a cylinder flask and you can put an exact measure turn it over upside down put your finger on the bottom squeeze this little lever and that drops 30 grains of black powder or power decks into this tube now if you want to use a different measure you can get something like this where you can adjust the number of grains anywhere from 5 up to I think 45 in this particular cylinder. Uh, but this pistol was designed for 30 grains. Now you may be looking at this stand. What's the stand for? Well, it keeps the pistol still when you're loading. Gives yourself an extra set of hands. I made this stand. Made it out of hardwood that I had laying around the barn. Stained it. it. Took me about an hour, hour and a half to make this. Now, I know some of you are gonna ask, 
how can I make one? Well, I created some plans. I'm going to have this available as a PDF to download in the description. Hope that helps. I'm not going to do another video on how to build this because, well, I've already built it. Now, to disassemble this, I'll take you through the process. Here's a pin that comes out on this side of the pistol. And what I do is I turn the pistol over like this. You can take a small punch, brass mallet, and just lightly tap the pin. And then grab and pull. Now there's a screw there that keeps the pin from sliding all the way out, as you can see. That comes in useful because I've had this come loose before while I was out shooting it and this came out and did not fall on the ground. I didn't lose it, so I'm sure that's the way it was designed. With that pin out, you just wiggle the barrel just a little bit and the whole barrel assembly comes off. And then you pull the cylinder off. Well, why is not the cylinder not coming off? If you pull this back into the half cock position, this will drop down out of the way and allow the cylinder to slide right off. As you can see, on the bottom of the cylinder there are six nipples. Now how to take these off? There's a special tool and you slide it over one of the nipples and turn it. just clean this pistol but I'll show you what you need to make sure of when you're loading it to shoot or reloading right after you shot it. You need to make sure that the holes in the nipples are clear you can take this little tool or a toothpick or a pen of any kind you should be able to see through there see the light through the back. Looks like that top one's not perfectly clear. Maybe some water in it from me cleaning it. There we go. I can see the light through there now. Now the barrel assembly, going back to this, there's a little keeper here. You squeeze and pull that down and this handle comes loose. And there's a little gear cam action that pushes a piston back. See the round shape on the piston? This is actually a, an assist to load with. It is shaped the same as a lead ball. And you can push the lead ball into the cylinder. receiver you've got nice walnut grips brass steel all case hardened hammer case hardened with a little extra heat treatment because I had to rebuild it the hand I was talking about is this piece of metal right here that pokes out whenever you pull the hammer back or when you yeah and that advances the cylinder forward one-sixth of a rotation every time you pull this back. And the hand engages on these little gears right here to turn the cylinder. The hammer has two positions. As you can watch here, this drops at the half cock position. Now that will allow the cylinder to slide on and off and spin free. When the hammer is back all the way, it locks in to one of these index holes to keep the cylinder from wiggling side to side 
It also will keep you from pulling it off. I think if you pull really hard, you can, but it's under spring tension here at the bottom. Now, when this thing is cocked back, this is a very, very, very light trigger. Maybe one pound, something like a well-tuned 1911 or a precision rifle. Very, very, very light single action trigger. There it goes. It slipped right out of my hand. Very, very light. Now let's reassemble the pistol and load it. You might notice, if you ever played around with one of these, that the center spindle will fit perfectly in the barrel. But nothing else will work. Same hole size. That's more like it. Push this pin down. We'll take a mallet. it's not too loose, not too tight, and that's reassembled. This is a big, big revolver. I think the overall length is 13 and 3 quarters inches, and the barrel, I think 8, 8 and a half inches long. This is a beast. I'd like to open carry this one day. Now, I want to go through the loading process with you. Let's bring out my stand again. Set the bottom of the pistol in here, top here. The first step is to put powder. Now this holds about five ounces of powder, like I said, and if you press on this little lever right here, it opens up a gate and allows powder to drop into the funnel. Now the funnel is calibrated to hold 30 grains. upside down, press the lever, let go of the lever, turn it right up again. Now the way I load this is to half cock the hammer back, Ooh, I cocked it all the way back, so the cylinder will spin. What you want to do is take your powder flask and align it over the hole then pour your 30 grains of powder in. You can repeat this make sure you're looking down to make sure you don't fill up one hole twice you get too much powder That's six. Now we're going to get six lead balls. And we'll start by putting one here, an open hole, and then rotating the cylinder until the ball is directly at the bottom. Remember that piston? We want to align that piston with the ball and press down. And what that also does, as you can tell, the ball has a good seat if it makes a little ring of lead and that comes off. Next ball. Ring of lead. Next ball.
And you don't have to have a stand to do this. It just really helps. And the last one. Sweep up these little lead pieces, recycle them. Now the next piece of the loading process requires peanut butter. What's peanut butter for besides eating? Yes, it's really peanut butter. Creamy. What you want to do to help prevent chain fires is you want to take the peanut butter and put it on your finger and just rub it in each hole and close in each hole. What that'll do, that'll uh, help prevent flash fires and sparks and everything from going back up in here. Because if you don't have a good seat on your bullet, it can cause a ch uh, the powder to ignite out of battery. Another thing that can cause that is if you're missing a firing cap on the back and somehow a spark comes out and goes back up in here and like that, you can have the um, bullet that's in the chamber that's going to go out the barrel. That one will go off, and you'll have one go off on the side, too. And that will basically be lead and powder and fire and everything right out the side and can actually injure you. So I'm going to put peanut butter on the sides, all around the front, to help prevent that. Another thing the peanut butter does, it lubricates the barrel in between shots, so it's really good for it. We take our peanut butter. We take our peanut butter, press a little bit into each hole. Yeah, it will get messy. or something else. Peanut butter just seems to be the most friendly. Also makes your gun smell good when you shoot it. After you put the peanut butter on, you just take a napkin, paper towel or something, put it here. Clean off any excess. piece of the puzzle putting on a firing cap. Now you'll put one of these on each nipple but before you do it you want to squeeze the sides a little bit. If they come round you want to make them a little oval so they fit better on the nipple they won't slide off under recoil or whatever. Let's see if I can get up close for you here. What you do you turn it and there's a little notch in the side for your thumb Press that over the nipple and slide it up on. Push it in with your thumb. Make sure that it'll rotate. Now I'm not going to put one on all of these because I'm in the house. I'll put them on when I go out to shoot it. Take that back off. They're a pain to take off manually. There we go. Another thing I'll show you is as you can see, I loaded all six cylinders. Now, not everybody loads all six cylinders. Some people will load five and then leave the hammer setting on the empty cylinder. 
So that if the hammer gets knocked, hit, dropped, or you snag it on something and pull it back, it won't set the charge off. That's a safety issue. Now, these pistols do have a position halfway between cylinders that you can rest the hammer on as well. And that's how I do mine when I'm taking it out to the range to shoot it. I don't load five. I kind of like to shoot all six shots, but just letting you know about that. Now we'll take it out to the range, see how accurate it is. Today's a very rainy day. If I'm to put out YouTube content on a regular basis, I can't let a little rain stop me. Now I'm out at the range in the rain. I want to try to get this done and over with quick. I've got a jug with water in the bottom to weight it down and a shoot and see target. I'm going to take the black powder revolver and see how well it does. I've got all six caps on. So I shouldn't have to take that time to do that. That's six shots. Now that's six shots with a black powder revolver from 1860. That's uh, one shot here, the rest here, and one here. Now when you're shooting black powder, there's a lot of smoke and it's actually hard to see when you're shooting and trying to shoot fast. Well, that's not bad. So the rain has stopped, so I'm going to go out to the range again and fire another six shots. Hey chickens. Wow. Alright, this time I'm going to give you a close up. And all six loaded. I want to aim slightly under that last group. A little bit down. A little bit further down. And one dead center. Now that was a misfire. That does happen. So what you want to do is keep it aimed down range to make sure the powder doesn't finally light up. We're going to raise it back. We got one more shot. I'm going to have a redo on that one round. Ready? That one worked. All these shots basically went straight down here. That's one shot. That's the next to the last shot and the last shot.
my bad. That one. Now that I've been out shooting, I'm going to take this apart and clean it. I've already knocked the pin out, so I'm going to pull that aside. Ease the barrel off. As you can see, the uh, peanut butter is gone. This black powder residue. Half cock position. There's one spent primer percussion cap still stuck in between the frame and the cylinder it's not too dirty but we do have to clean it before we put it up so what I'm gonna do take this tool remove the nipples I'm just going to drop everything in the sink. I've got a strainer to catch everything. With one of these nipples I think I over tightened, so I may have trouble with it. But we'll see. Oh, I got it. That's why I mentioned earlier. Do not over tighten these things. Actually, I actually bent my tool. Alright, all six out. I'm taking a brush and soapy water and cleaning these cylinders out now. Some warm water, some soap. center as well. Put a smaller brush, go through the nipple holes, clean them. We'll take the barrel. Oh. use a brass brush or a nylon brush, not a steel brush. Work all this peanut butter off. Take a toothbrush. Get up in here clean all these parts. And we'll rinse it off. Now to dry this, I typically will towel dry it and then uh, stick it in the oven at about 150 to 200 for a few minutes and let everything dry very good. thing clean and lubricated is necessary. You saw how it shot on the range. So you want every shot to count. The only way you're going to do that is if it's cleaned and lubed properly and stored properly in a safe where the humidity can't get to it. I'm going to dry this off and reassemble it. Well, I hope you liked today's video on my black powder revolver. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you again for visiting Red Barn Acres.